Well, hello. Welcome to Chief Architect Workshop. Make sure you say hello to us in our mailbox. Help us help you. Send your questions and files to Chief Architect Workshop at gmail.com. Let's get started. Hello. Okay, today we are going to talk about uh an addition a second floor addition and um specifically um what happens uh plan wise wall section wise when you put a second floor on top of an existing brick home um one of the things that uh, uh an amateur that had sketched something up for this uh client before had done was basically placed the um, had had lined up the had assumed that the uh, that the walls which were ten inches thick carried all the way up through, which is not what happens. The walls will not be ten inches thick when you uh, do a ten inch brick wall down below and to the addition above. And this is an interesting little thing that we can clean up. I can show you how to clean up right now. The roof, as you can see, has uh, somehow gotten in. Oh, and this was dinked around. These walls are moved around uh, for the stairwell. The stairwell got pushed out to create more room for the steps, and the uh, the roof did not get changed accordingly. And so now, as it tries to build up the uh, framing, stops at the roof and doesn't go all the way through so let's just let's start by fixing that okay we go down to the second floor where the roof plane is contained and we can see that yeah this got pushed out quite a ways to make sure that we had enough room because we've got high truss uh, deep truss to span all the way across from uh, outside bearing wall to outside bearing wall create a lot of depth to the truss, which means we had to increase the risers uh, for the stairwell. So, very simple fix. We take that, and we just slide that guy to there. And then, and then that happens there. So what we can do is take that, uh, take that uh, roof plane. We will break it uh, right here at this intersection. And then what do we want to do? Then we want to stretch it. So that it does that. And now that's what's happening. And let's see if that fixed that. Yeah, there we go. Now oh, we're missing a corner board too. So let's build. Corner board got killed. Let's put a corner board on there. Hello. Corner board, please. Did I miss him? Okay, what happened is the corner board is there. It's just got blocked by this roof. So let's just slide that corner board up. And there we go. So let's uh, go back to perspective, floor overview. And we'll... Um, and again, we have that situation where uh, we have the siding is actually here. And this little roof plane, this is an overframe to create drainage. If I'm correct. But let's, let's show how we correct that as well. Yeah, you can see the culprit right there. Because again, we had to push out this wall a little bit. This little overframe plane that we added so that the water would not get stuck in this valley comes down wraps yourself around here and drains so something that the carpenter will have to build that overframe and this overframe as well and we just slip it back and hopefully that should do it let's see if it did yep there we go. That'll do it. Okay. So 
So let's get back to the main business. What do you do to make sure that uh, you design properly, you detail it properly when you're putting a second floor of siding over a first floor of brick? Okay, uh, let's take a look at the floor plan. Um, let's go down to the first floor and you can see that there's the 10 inch wall. That's the existing 10 inch wall and the existing floor plan you know, we just uh, drew in the walls, existing walls, and we really are, we're not building it, so we don't didn't show all the cabinets. But this is a uh, kitchen area, bedrooms, bathroom there, bathroom there, uh, etc., which we're really not going to mess with. Everything happens on the second floor. In order to get this to work structurally, there is a line of steel somewhere here, but we're not going to uh, bear all that stuff on there. Uh, one of the things that uh, if you're new to Chief, you really should be aware of uh, how things, what is the structural concept? How are things working structurally? Um, you just can't throw things willy-nilly on top of stuff. Um, so you want the bearing wall to go to bearing wall. In this case, we are uh, having the truss manufacturer give us trusses that go quite a ways. Let's see, what is that dimension? Yeah, that's that's a monster. They're going 28 feet, 28.7 out to out. So we have some fairly deep trusses because we are not trying to bear on the interior. We're not going to put any weight on there. This is an existing house. It's got conduit, light fixtures, all sorts of stuff, drywall we're going to totally float the second floor above it. We're not going to mess with any of that stuff. Keep that all intact and put in a clean floor as much as possible. Only have to patch up as necessary. Um, there's a lot of conduit that sits on top of the uh, existing uh, trusses. No, I believe this is a stick build, the existing stick build. And we will, uh, we're going to leave that all in place. We don't want to redo those. We're just going to snip the uh, roof rafters lay a plate around the perimeter and that'll raise it up inch and a half enough over the uh, conduit and allow for a little play in the trusses without smacking into that uh, existing ceiling structure. Okay, so what, what happens dimensionally is you know we do not have, there's a 10 inch wall down below and we go upstairs it's a five and a half inch wall that goes to the outside face of the masonry. So it is cantilevered five inches. This is a very common detail in suburban tract homes. Um, stuff is cantilevered. Just five inches. But what that means is that dimensionally you get a little bit more room upstairs instead of losing six inches and making that a 12-2 room. That's 12.8 instead of 14.2. That's actually 14.9. So a little cantilever gives you a little bit more, a little bit more space, and every inch counts. Um, and you have to be accurate. That 10 inch would totally throw that off. Uh, so this is what really happens in drafting convention. The, uh, the structure is always above you in the plan. It's pretty common. So from the first floor, when you look above you'll see the structure. And in this case, we um, have our rafters in gray, 16 inches on center, coming up to a point uh, where we made sure we followed our two to one rule for cantilevering. So we're putting a girder truss in there and the manufacturer structural engineer will make sure that that uh, girder truss um, is rigid enough to handle uh, the load that's being imposed on there and the load of the balcony that's cantilevered uh, off the second floor. And it makes it uh, very easy. We don't have to worry about point loads, columns, pads in the basement, all that sort of stuff. Everything carried on the perimeter walls thanks to the 18-inch deep trusses. In this case, we did a very uh, quick uh, wall section. We just used the existing... Did not convert it to a detail. 
um, a CAD detail. Just use what we had. We have a 25 foot height limitation, which limits what we can do with these trusses. I could not match the 412 because then we would violate the 25 foot grade to peak uh, rule. We did get a permit for this. Um, so we had to go with the 312 truss in here. Custom, again, what's nice is you give the truss manufacturer the profile you're after. It should be like this on both sides. And um, he will design the truss accordingly and put in the connector plates and make sure that it all works structurally and they'll stamp the drawings. And you have to turn that over to the uh, building department. Here's the depth of the 18-inch uh, trusses. It really eats up a lot. Okay, so let's go to our uh, detail wall section sheet. This one we did take a detail, view from detail, and then added, uh, you know, detail it up a little bit, showed the insulation, how the insulation works. And uh, we want to make sure that we have um, insulation all the way down across. Uh, we're going to have a... Um, we're going to cantilever the trusses across here. We're not going to continue the brick veneer up. We want to make sure we fill that cavity to maintain our continuous thermal envelope uh, and uh, keep that thing from losing heat. Uh, so here you can see the depth of the truss. There's the existing ceiling joist. Put a plate on there and we put our 18 inch deep uh, truss across there. And that's what happens there. Again, here we quickly dimension what's happening with the truss. Make sure we have enough meat on there. Ask him for three feet. If he needs more, you can take more to get a little bit more meat on there to get it wor to work. This is what we're going to call from the face of the plywood to the face outside face of the uh, truss. Put a uh, plate on there, put the finished fascia board on there, and uh, there you have it. And here's a little fun thing. How do we get this? How do we get up to the second floor? We're going to come up through the side door, and we are actually going to punch into the garage. We're going to get some lambs that span the length of the garage, so they're pretty meaty because they have to support the landing and the stringer. And the car's nose will park underneath the stair on one side there. It's an extra deep garage, so really not an issue. The nose actually comes to somewhere over here, and the whole car will fit in there easily at 7, 8. Um, so that's a little fun detail. Okay, that just a uh, little quick overview. Some fun things to look out for when you're putting a second floor addition onto a uh, brick home. See you next time. Okay, learn to use Chief to its ultimate limit. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, get on our mailing list, shoot us an email, and you'll get info on our free learning videos, and uh, keep up to date.